Hey, welcome back. We've been talking through ideas in a vibrations and waves unit for a physics course, and I'm trying to cover all of the major ideas in a physics course that you're going to see and help you through that course. So let's go ahead and get to it. So first of all, I do want to say here's a pendulum on the left. This is what's called a mass spring system over here. This is a vertical up and down mass spring system. This is a diagram I've made for a horizontal mass spring system. You'll see both in problems, so I want you to be aware of those and be able to handle both. We do need to go over some basic ideas in terms of concepts or definitions, you could say, so that you'll know how to navigate this unit. And so the first definition I want to talk about is a period. So the period is the time for one complete cycle. And I'll talk to you in our next lesson about how sometimes students get confused about this, but it's one complete cycle. So the easiest way to measure a period is to pick one extreme location like right now and the time it takes to go over and back to that extreme location. If you were to pick the middle location, then sometimes students get confused because they only measure half a period, but we want to go all the way over and all the way back from an extreme location. That'll be our period. It's going to be measured in seconds. Typically, you could measure it in like picoseconds or nanoseconds, depending on what you're dealing with, but they're all different metric versions of seconds, you could say. Secondly, we're going to be talking about amplitude, and that's the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. And it's a length, so it's measured in like centimeters or meters or some other version of length measurement. So if you take a look at this drawing over here, it's a little hard to see because this pendulum is not moving very greatly from side to side. But I have tried to draw a line in the middle axis right here when it's in its equilibrium position. And then a line in the middle of when it is at its extreme position over here. And that difference is going to be the amplitude right here. So the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position is what we mean by an amplitude. Over here, we can take a look at the amplitude of this. This is a little easier to see. That's going to be the difference between the equilibrium position and the stretch position in this drawing right over here. Lastly, I do want to talk about something called a frequency. A frequency is a really crucial idea in a lot of electronics, a lot of electricity and magnetism, and in waves and vibrations, which is the unit that we're in right now, vibrations and waves. So frequency is the number of cycles per unit time, and so this is usually per second, you could say. There's a special unit you need to become aware of, and it's called a hertz. One hertz is equal to one cycle per second. And I'm going to explain in a little more detail what we mean by that because students have a little bit of trouble with hertz. As long as you take enough time and become comfortable with hertz, you're going to be absolutely fine though. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our first equation here. So this is talking about the relationship between frequency and period. They are inverse of each other. And so if I were to measure this, the period over here Let's say I measure that period to be about three seconds. I'm saying it takes about three seconds for it to go over and back. Now that may be slightly off. It almost certainly is slightly off, but let's just make it easy and call it three seconds for now. And if that's the case, I can figure out what the frequency of this system is, of this pendulum over here. And to do that, I would say, well, it's the inverse of the period. So it's one over the period. And that would be 0.33 hertz. That's one way to think of it, but a lot of students have trouble visualizing or understanding what we mean by hertz. Another way to describe that is going to be cycles per second. So that's what we mean by hertz. And I think this is the easiest way to understand what we're talking about here. How many complete cycles do you have per unit time, usually per second? And if you're dealing with per seconds, you're dealing with hertz. Now, the trouble with this explanation right here is this is a descriptor up top in the numerator. We don't have to cancel out cycles, algebraically speaking. If you're familiar with working with radians, it's very similar to that. We don't have to cancel out radians. We don't have to cancel out degrees. We don't have to cancel out cycles. It's more of a descriptor than an algebraic unit, you could say. All right, so let's continue. This is another way that you'll see this sometimes in physics problems. You'll need to know what is meant by that. And so some unit to the negative one power, that's like saying one over that unit. Something to the negative one power means that thing is in the denominator, so to speak. Lastly, this is another way, I haven't really seen this before, 
but I'm just trying to give you a bunch of ways to conceptualize this so you can understand what we're talking about. But this is another way of thinking about this mathematically, and if that helps you, great. But I do want to emphasize that the most common way we're going to be talking about what we just did is to say the frequency is 0.33 hertz. That's by far the most common way. And the best way to conceptually understand that, I believe, is to think of it as cycles per second, understanding that the cycles is there as a descriptor, not as an algebraic unit. All right, fair enough. So one way to think about this as we continue is to say, well, we figured out what the frequency is. Let's do the reverse operation. Let's figure out what the period is if we know this is our frequency over here. So this is our equation over here. We know what the frequency is. We want to solve for the period. So the period's in the denominator. We need to algebraically get it into the numerator. So the first step to be able to do that is to multiply both sides by the period. And then you're going to divide both sides by the frequency and you'll end up with period by itself. Notice this is basically extremely similar to this. It's just that the F and the T have changed positions between this and this down here. And so if we go ahead and we do the math, we have 1 over 0 0.33 seconds to the negative power, or you could even say 1 over 0 0.33 hertz, really. And my question is, do you know what the period is going to be? Try to think about what the answer is right now. And if you guessed 3 seconds, that would be correct. And that should make sense. If you didn't get that, that's okay. But now, hopefully, that does make sense. Oh, yeah, we just did the inverse of the previous operation. So it makes sense that we would end up with our original given value. That's the inverse relationship between frequency and period. What I do want to do is just introduce a couple equations that you may have to use. Typically, you don't have to use these very often in a physics class. You may have to use them for a lab, though. If you're going to do a lab with the period of a pendulum or a lab with the period of a mass spring system, I just want you to be introduced to these. So for now, I will point out this L value has to do with the length of the pendulum. This G is 9.81 meters per second squared, 2 pi over here, obviously. Down here, we've got M. This is going to be mass. This K value is the spring constant. We've talked about the spring constant previously. It's essentially how much force it takes to compress or to expand a spring. All right, so hopefully that's been helpful. We're going to move on and do other lessons in this unit of vibrations and waves. If you have any questions, let me know down below, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.